Hello guys, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello doctor. Hi, how are you? Yeah, yes. Hello, yes, how are you? Yeah. Long time no see, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So for those who is uh, available, uh, you can please turn on your camera so that I won't feel like I'm talking to myself. Please, thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, I think since we have a limited time, uh, so I think we will just uh, straight away start our topics for today, which is uh, timber. Yeah. So last week we have already covered the, uh, about concrete. Okay. We have already discussed a little bit about the properties of the concrete. All right. And then uh, the best ingredients in making concrete, eh, which is the cement, cost aggregate, fine aggregate, and also the water. And then also uh, some of the uh, what we call applications in using concrete, right? Okay, so actually we still have another two more uh, materials that we need to discuss. Uh, one is timber, which I think we should be able to cover it by today. And then we have another uh, material which is steel. Eh? So if let's say uh, I cannot finish uh, the timber uh, for the, this topic by today, then maybe I would just. Uh, how to say make another video and then upload it to your e-learning a yeah, short video regarding uh, steel yeah. but then steel actually is one of the material uh, which we also be covered by dr lao eh, when you talk about metal okay so no need to worry about that okay so today we will focus to talk about uh, timber yeah so i believe all of you know about timber okay so it is one of the engineering uh, material in the construction yeah? so although it is not commonly being used as a uh, as uh, uh, compared to concrete and steel, eh? but sometimes in the construction industry, we'll still use it in certain application. Eh? Even during the constructions of a concrete structure, so sometimes we need to do the form work eh? by using timber also. And then when you are designing the force work and the, what we call the form work by using timber, you also need to know their properties. Okay, so timber, I know you all already know it is from tree, right? Okay, so when we have three, and then uh, when we cut it into lock, so this is what we call as lock. Sorry. Okay, this is what we call as lock. Eh? Once we have cut it from the tree, this is what we call as lock, and then lock will go for lumber. Okay, this is lumber, and we will talk about this uh, one by one later on, right? Okay, so uh, for this topic, eh, uh, what we need you to understand is regarding the properties and the structure of the timber. And then the factors that affecting the strength and durability, because strength and durability actually is the two most Im, uh, important uh, parameters yeah, in uh, when we talk about timber. And then a uh, little bit about the production process, which is the wood products, for example, the plywood, how they make plywood, how they make the vineyard, uh, what they call uh, board, a particle board, a fiber board, and so on. Eh? And then some of their applications. Lah. Okay. So wood is one of the oldest known material used in the construction industry. Yeah. So if we go to the rural area and go back to our hometown Kampong, eh, so we can see most of the building were built by using the timber before the common uh, use of the concrete. Okay. And also steel. Uh, and among all of this construction material, this the timber is the only naturally renewable building material. Yeah. We can plant it. And we can plant it and then species of wood in malaysia actually is uh, quite many yeah we have more than 2500 yeah and then uh, in the world yeah? in the world i think the total number of species is around 73000 to 74000 like that yeah? but in malaysia alone in tropical regions it is about 2500 which is quite a lot right and then uh, wood is considered as one of the best engineering uh, material and then uh, it, it has been used. Eh? It has been used in some of the application. For example, like the building, eh? like what uh, what I have already mentioned earlier, kampong house. Okay, and then railways, mining, and so on and so forth. And then, unlike steel and concrete, the timber actually is not made of a consistent structural property. So these are the things that we have to highlight today. Yeah, it is not like a concrete. Yeah, it is what we call as uh, anisotropic material. Okay, 
So when it is an isotropic material, we have to deal with the directions, eh? especially the direction of the grain, eh? which we are going to discuss in deep later on. Eh? And it does not uh, behave equally in all directions. Okay, so here are some of the examples of the utilizations of timber in the constructions. And you can say uh, the application is many, but especially in houses, okay, and then some uh, JT, okay, so on and so forth, right? So the process is uh, get the tree from the forest, okay, cut the tree into log, like what I have already mentioned earlier, okay, into log, okay, transporting of the log to the uh, manufacturing, uh, and then after that, they will cut it into. Uh, lumber yeah this is what requires lumber okay but this is not the finished product yet okay so we will talk about this later on so in the form of lumber uh, in the form of lumber pieces of wood which is cut from the tree trunks yeah? like what we have already discussed earlier and then wood in construction engineering actually it can also be used aside from the lumber it can be used as a, 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 as different wood products yeah? for example like blue laminated timber so this one uh, this one i believe uh, uh, most of you have already know, and eh? this is blue lump, and eh? we call it as blue lump, and eh? we will talk about this later on. And then we have pressed wood, and then we have chipboard. Yeah, so the normal operation eh? or normal productions of the of the wood product actually is from tree trunks to log, and then to the lumber. Okay, right. Okay, so. This is the uh, process flow chart yeah, from the timber locks, okay, and then we go to the lock sizing, yeah, lock sizing to make it to the size or shape that we want, and then after that, normally, yeah, normally the lock will go for a process which is what we call as air seasoning. Yeah? So during this process, so actually the timber or the or the or the or the woods uh, the timber, it will be left to the to our uh, what we call to our atmosphere in order to drain out the water the moisture content inside the timber okay so why we need to do that and we will talk about this later on because moisture content actually uh, will affect eh, the properties of our timber be it strength and also durability right and then after that we will do some treatment which is a uh, chemical treatment so this treatment is what we call a uh, preservative okay so this preservative is the what we call inhibition for the uh, what we call uh, for the attack eh, to prevent our timber from the attack of for example like fungi insects and so on right so this is also one of the most important process and then after that is the kiln season uh, seasoning okay we have air seasoning and also we have kiln seasoning so this air seasoning is we is uh, we left the timber product eh, to the atmosphere to let it dry eh, to let it dry out and then this kin seasoning is we put the lumber and also our timber product into a thing which is what we call as kin eh? so this kin eh, it will heat up our wood so that the what we call the balance of water content inside the timber will be dried out entirely okay will be dry up entirely okay so this is uh, also one of the most important process and then we have joinery works eh? for example like uh, in the process of <clears throat> making the plywood uh, block board okay fabric noise uh, fabric nails and so on and so forth and then after that is the testing painting final inspection okay so we will talk about uh, each one of these later on right okay before we proceed, eh, before we proceed, uh, here are some of the backgrounds or introductions regarding timber. So we have to know eh, how the names of the woods come from. So before this, eh, I would like to know uh, just a simple question. Okay, in your opinion, what is the what is the difference between wood and timber? So normally we say wood timber timber wood, right? Eh? So what is the difference in your in your in your opinion? Uh, doctor, I want to try. Okay, Timber right. is uh, a, a tree that not being processed yet, but wood is a, a product that have been gone through a lot of process that it was an end end product. Okay, good, Hafiz. Okay, so the idea the the idea is already there. Yeah? So timber and wood, the difference is after process and before process. Okay, 
but the, uh, but but you said it oppositely. <laughs> you have said it oppositely, <laughs> the other way around. Eh? It, it should be the other way around. So wood is not processed yet. When the, when 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 uh, we can say when the roots of the tree is still in the soil, okay. And then timber is after we have uh, we have cut it. Eh? We have cut it. Okay. So the names of the wood it can be from many sources. Eh? So the first one is vernacular. We call it vernacular, which is from the local community. So in Malaysia we have like for example like uh, Chengai uh antenna eh? so this is uh this name eh? actually is from the local names eh? it is uh referred to Chenga, eh? Chenga. okay and then we also have the botanical name which is which is his uh, site its scientific name eh? given by the botanical member eh? for example like this uh, balan or carpus heme which is uh, also referred to Chenga. okay and then we have commerce which uh, we sell when we when we purchase and sell this timber right so it's given for trading yeah? for example Chengala, right? so this is a more accepted uh, types of uh, name that we are using yeah? which is the commerce one so similar with our structure yeah? similar with our structure so woods also a uh, timber uh, woods also tree also it has its uh, structure like this yeah? so it has buttress okay and then we know this buttress which is the soil level yeah it has its roots okay like our foundation for the structure and then it has the superstructure which is the branches leaves and so on and so forth yeah so we will look into uh, it uh, deeper later on yeah and then why wood is popular in the lightweight constructions it is because the simplicity in fabrication yeah? we can uh, use the wood for many uh, different types of purposes okay and then it is light okay wood normally it is lighter compared to the water right so it is very light and then it is reusable yeah? you try to uh, think back yeah? when we are using foam work in our construction site yeah? so normally one set of the foam work you will reuse it multiple times yeah? three to four times and then material availability yeah we, uh, this is renewable material and then simpler con uh, simpler connection okay no need to design too much you only need nails fabrical joints and so on right and then it is environmental compatibility, yeah, which means that this is a green in engineering materials. Okay, and then it is adapt, uh, adaptable to modifications and remodeling. Yeah, we can shape it easily, yeah, saw, cut, and so on. And then the advantages of the timber over other materials for, uh, let's say, concrete and so steel. Yeah. So actually, steel, uh, sorry, actually, timber is stronger than any other materials of construction if we compare the proportion to the weight okay if we compare to the weight so we know that uh, steel is very strong and concrete is very strong but then they are very heavy okay so if we use the compression uh, i mean the compressive strength of this material divided by its weight eh, compared with the what we call the capacity of the timber divided by its weight yeah so the what we call the timber actually is better Okay, and then it can work easily to any size and shape, and then it can be jointed uh, form easily, yeah? and then structural connections also easily made. Okay, and then it is uh, economical. Yeah? It is the cheapest material yeah? because the wastage is actually we can minimize it. Yeah? We can minimize minimize this wastage. Okay, so this is the fun part. So wood or timber, we can classify it into hardwood and also softwood. Yeah. From its name, I believe you already can tell that eh? hardwoods actually is the strongest, uh, is stronger compared to the softwood, right? But actually, it is not. Eh? So this name actually is not classified due to its hardness or so on. It is actually due to its nature. So hardwood actually is referred to the tree which has the broad leaf, okay, seed which has hard shell, and then uh, mostly grow in the tropical region. Eh? For example, like in Jati, eh, sorry, uh, for example, Jati. Okay, and then softwood, eh, which is the species that has neither like leaf, eh, like this one, eh, like this one, and mostly grow in the seasonal climates. Why I said the classifications of hardwood and softwood has no uh, connection or has, has no relationship, direct relationship with the hardness of this material. That is because some of the softwood actually is harder, okay, or stronger compared to the hardwood. For example, like pine tree, eh, or we call yellow pine eh, to be exact yellow pine eh? so yellow pine is a softwood but it is stronger compared to uh, let's say bal balsa okay balsa is one type of the hardwood balsa normally uh, is used to make chop chopsticks eh? 
for Chinese people. Eh? Normally, it's used to make chopstick and so on. Eh? And also in uh, in in our university, actually, when we are organizing the what we call the uh, UT uh, UTM bridge competitions, eh? the material that we are using actually is balsa eh? because it is light, okay, but it is uh, strong. But of course, eh, balsa if we compare with the yellow pine, yeah, it is not as hard as yellow pine, okay. So. Uh, this hardwood and softwood actually is only regarded on the nature eh, of these uh, trees only. Eh? It has no direct relation with this hardness. Okay, but generally, eh, generally we can say that hardwoods are harder to work compared with the softwood. Okay, it's uh, it's harder to work. Okay, so this is the structure of a timber. Yeah. So if we look at here, if we take one section out eh, and we blow out, actually. It, what inside the, the tree is look like this okay so if you look at here actually you can see there are a lot of ring right we call this as radical ring okay this is actually what we call as a uh, annual ring eh? and annual ring okay annual ring and this ring will form uh, one every year okay so if you want to know how old is the tree we can actually cut the tree and then we calculate the ring okay if they have uh, if it has 20 ring which means that it is 20 years old okay so why the ring is formed like this and later on we will discuss about this eh? and then this ring actually we also contribute to the properties of the tree okay so this is just for the introduction eh? and then inside here you can see inside here actually in this darker color we call here this region is hardwood okay this hardwood actually is uh, in the middle here, in the middle here, actually we have a place which is called pit. Eh? Pit. So this pit actually is like our vertebrata, our backbone, eh? the pit. Okay. So the wood which is located in close to this backbone is what we call as hardwood. Okay. And then at the outer section here, we have subwood, eh? subwood. Okay. And then the skin, eh? and then the skin of the tree is what we call as bark. Sorry, my uh, bark. Okay, the skin of the tree. Okay, so if we blow up the section further, yeah, to this section, to this section, you can see that okay, this actually is the bark. Okay, bark of the tree, which cover the tree, yeah, which cover our tree from uh, losing of its moisture. Okay, and protect the tree from uh, being injured and so on. Okay, so the water, how they transfer if the water, yeah. Water normally they get from the roots, right? So how the water is transferred up to the tree is actually through this area, which is what we call as silum. Okay. So inside here, silum, we have a lot of this vessel, which is vertically, okay, which is vertical, and then it will move the water upwards. Okay. So when the water moves upwards, okay. So supposedly, yeah, supposedly the water needs to go upwards also, right? Aside from going upwards, it will go, it, it needs to go outward. So when it goes upwards, yeah, it will through this rain. We call rain. Okay, rain. So the water transfer from the hardwood to the subwood is what we call as rain. Okay. So once the water has transferred up to the tree here, it will reach the branches and everything. Yeah? And together with the leaf, okay, and then sun, okay, it will have this photosynthesis process. Okay. And during the photosynthesis process, it will generate uh, energy for the for the for the for the tree. Yeah? The energy for the tree, which is in the form of sugar. So the sugar, it will go down to the tree. Okay, it will go down to the tree, circulate down to the tree. Yeah, through this portion, which is what we call as phloem. Yeah? P H L O E M. Yeah? Phloem. Okay, it is about similar like our blood circulation. Okay, similar to our blood circulation. So it takes the water going upwards, okay, and then the sugar, okay, sugar, and then after photosynthesis process, the sugar will be uh, transferred, will be circulated down to the tree through the flower. Okay, so that is the normal process. Okay, so now uh, we talk about the growth ring or the annual ring, eh, which we have already uh, mentioned earlier. So it is this, eh, the growth ring. Okay, so in the wood, actually we can see, eh, in every layer of the ring, for example, if we look at the tree, eh, so actually it has this layer. Eh, this is a layer. This is what we call as one ring. 
okay and then you have another ring okay like this yeah but then we look at this ring first okay so in this ring actually is comprising two sections one is what we call as early wood and another one is what we call as lead wood okay so what is the difference between early wood and also lead wood is early wood normally is the cell which has the larger opening and it is formed during winter like here okay like here okay so why it is formed uh, bigger during the winter because during the winter yeah it need to store uh, more sugar more water more energy yeah so that's why it is formed as bigger right and then we have lead wood lead wood is a cell with smaller opening and it is formed during the summer okay during the summer which is here okay you can see the what we call the cell cavity yeah? the cell cavity each one of this we call cell cavity is much more smaller compared to the early woods all right so if you look at here okay so this is how it looks like so this is the microstructure we have the cell wall yeah? each one of the cell they have cell wall and then they have cell cavity okay and each of the cell it is store uh, full with water okay store full with water so if you look at here, okay, so this is, uh, you can see eh, more clearly in this diagram, right? more clearly in this diagram. So this is the, what we call the early wood. Okay, sorry, this is lead wood and then this is the uh, uh, lead wood. Okay, so from here, you actually can see that, okay, this is the annual ring which is formed. Okay, uh, Edna, anything? Uh, yes, doctor. Um, since um, this late wood and early wood is, uh, present during winter and summer does uh, this yeah. apply also to the tropical. yeah yeah okay in tropical okay in uh, tropical it is a bit uh, different eh? in tropical it, it will also form the lead wood and also the early wood but the formations of the lead wood and early wood in the tropical region is based on the drying and also wet season which is the raining season and also during the hot season. It will still form these things. Eh? But actually, if we look at it, we study eh, the microstructure of the all, all the trees eh, from the seasonal country, climate seasonal country, and also in Malaysia, like a uh, tropical country. Right? The In tropical region, actually, this, eh, you will you will not see that appearance compared to the, to the what we call to the seasonal country. Right? You can see uh, maybe yeah, maybe in the in the four season country you can see the lead wood is much more bigger compared to the early wood. But in Malaysia, the the sizes are the size are big, uh, 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 about the same. Okay, but you can still uh, what we call tell the difference. Yeah? One is bigger, one is uh, but it's not like this, not as as, as significant as this. Okay, Edna, thank you. Okay. All right, so that is uh, that is uh, the, the answer. Okay, all right. So if according to the Forest Research Institute of Malaysia, the FRM, so hardwood in the Malaysia can be classified based on its density and also its durability. Right. So basically, we have three categories. So one is the heavy weight, the density which is greater than 880 kg per meter cube, which is very durable. Yeah? So the examples are Chongal and also Balau. Yeah? From its name, you already can feel that it is very strong, right? And then we have the intermediate weight hardwood, which is ranging from 700, about 700 to 880 kg per meter cube, right? less durable, for example, like compass, crowing, and so on. And then we have the lightest one, lightweight hardwood, where the density is uh, lesser compared to the 720, okay? Right, so this is uh, the example. Right, the example, eh? if softwood, eh? in softwood, softwood, it will also form the, what we call the early, uh, uh, early woods and also the left woods, eh? but it is not as dense as uh, compared to the hardwood. Eh? Hardwood is like this, right? You can see eh? the, dif the difference, okay? All right, so timber, we can say the most important properties that affect the strength and the durability of timber or woods are actually two things. Eh? One is the moisture content, Okay, one is the moisture content and another one is the specific gravity. So specific gravity of a wood actually is highly dependent on the microstructure of the wood cell, which is the early wood and also, and also the lead wood, right? So this is the diagram showing the effects of the moisture content and also the specific uh, gravity. So if you look at here, <clears throat> so this is the wood, which is green. Eh? We say when the, when the, what we call when the, 
timber is green, normally it is referred to the timber which has the water weight more than 90% of the wood. Eh? When the timber is not dry entirely, 90%. So this is when it is air dry, where it is dry completely. Okay, so comparatively, the wood which has been dyed dry completely will have the modulus of rupture, which is higher compared to the green one. Okay, so what is modulus of rupture? Actually, this is an indication of uh, the textural strength of the uh, of, of the material. Okay, textural strength. Okay, so if you look at here, yeah, with the increase of the specific gravity, you can see that uh, the modulus rupture of the timber increased. Okay, it is almost uh, what we call uh, in a direct relationship. Okay, so what about the effect of the moisture content uh, to the stress, eh? to the stress capacity of the, what we call, of the timber? You can see, eh? so this line is for the modulus of rupture, okay, this line, modulus of rupture, which is for the flexural strength, okay, and then we have the compress uh, com compressive strength, and then we have the modulus of elasticity, okay, so actually modulus of elasticity, yeah, is the is an indicator of how easily the wood is being deformed okay how hard is the wood okay so, uh, how hard is the timber okay so that is uh, modulus of, of elasticity so no matter which properties of this yeah uh, modulus of rupture compressive strength or modulus of elasticity they all decrease with the increase of the moisture content okay they will decrease but up to a certain point, yeah, up to this certain point, okay, it will decrease up to this certain point, which is about 30%, yeah, depending on the type of the wood. Yeah, we say roughly about 30%. What up until this, up until this point, okay, the properties will become constant. Okay, the properties will become constant. Okay, so this point is what we call as FSP, yeah, which is fiber saturated point. Okay, fiber saturated point. Okay, we will talk about this. Uh, we will highlight about this later on. Yeah? So don't worry. Yeah. So at this moment, you can uh, what you need to uh, to to what we call to to remember is only with the increase of the moisture content, the properties of the wood will decrease. And yeah? no matter it is modulus of rupture, compressive strength, or the modulus of elasticity, right? So the moisture content is actually the weight of the water in wood. Eh, expressed as a percentage of its oven dry weight. So we compare the wood with the oven dry weight, which is the solid weight. Eh? This is of uh, what we call a solid weight, eh? which is the solid of the wood, eh? solid weight. Okay. So the weight of the water, uh, the weight of the water in the wood, eh? let's say just now I did mention about 90%, eh? 90% uh, water in the, what we call in the, in the green wood. Okay. 90% of the green wood is the, weight of water weight of water sorry divided by the weight of a solid okay or oven dry weight okay so that is the percentage how we determine the percentage and then through this actually we can see that in determining the moisture content we can use the moisture and also we can use this these things yeah, or these things which is what we call as moisture meter and yeah, we just need to touch the wood or timber by using these two tips Okay, so the theory, I, I, I believe you all, some of you have, might have already known, eh? because in wood, eh, actually, when it is, uh, when they have uh, water, okay, when they have water, so it will generate electricity, right? It means it can conduct electricity. So if this tips, eh, eh, this tip actually is to measure the electricity, and then it indicate how much is the water content inside the wood. Eh? So that's why you only need to use this to measure. And then wood actually is the is hygroscopic uh, substance. Eh? It can absorb water of or moisture. Eh? It wood eh, what we call why we call it as hygroscopic. Eh? It's not because it will take the water from the soil eh, from the roots. Eh? Hygroscopic means that the wood it can also absorb water from the our atmosphere, from the air. Eh? When the humidity is high, eh, wood has the ability to absorb the water from the atmosphere so the ability of the timber to absorb or lose moisture is depends on the environmental condition which is the relative humidity and also the temperature okay so this is the variations of the moisture content in the living uh, trees and their relationship with the specific gravity and so the more uh, moisture content in the wood and the specific 
gravity of the wood is reduced. Eh? For example, like moisture content, when it is 400% compared to the solid wood, okay? So the specific, uh, specific gravity is only about 0.2. Okay, so this is just a rough estimation. And then the moisture content, when it is 100%, 100% eh? to its solid weight, okay? The specific gravity is about 1.15. Okay, so typical tree, Normally, they contain uh, the water, uh, which is about two times of the weight of the, of the solid material. Okay, so, make, so which means that in the timber or in the wood, eh, if it is not oven dry or it is not uh, air, uh, undergo this air seasoning process. Yeah? So, basically, yeah? so basically, inside this timber, uh, most of the content actually is water, eh? contribute to the weight. Okay, because it is about two times. And sometimes, depending on the types of the tree, it can go up to 400%, 500%, depending on the types of the tree. Okay. All right. So, how the water is stored inside our wood. So, just now we have already talked about the vessel, yeah? the vessel in the silum. Yeah? In the silum, yeah? you still remember the silum, yeah? the vessel in the silum. So, inside each of this cavity, yeah, inside each of this cavity, actually we have uh, two types of water. One is what we call as free water. Free water is the water which is inside the uh, cavity, our cell cavity. And then we have another type of water which is what we call as bound water or absorbed water. Yeah? But the uh, famous name is bound water, like, eh? so we just term it as a bound water. So the bound water is located in the cell wall. Okay? So that's why in the wood, eh, actually it is full with water. Okay, and then the amount of the water in the cell cavities varies with the amount of the drying. So lumber, eh, normally when we work the lumber, eh, it has about 50% of, of uh, water, eh, excess its uh, solid weight. Okay, all right. So this is what we have already touched a little bit just now, which is the FSP, eh, the fiber set saturation it is a not e fiber saturation point so what actually is the fiber saturation point so fiber saturation point is when the cell cavity contain only air okay if you look at here so this is the cell cavity so inside here yeah inside here it is empty it contains only air but the cell wall cell wall is saturated with water cell wall the cell wall is saturated with water so it is not entirely dry, yeah, but the cell wall is saturated with water. So moisture content at the FSP, like I, I have mentioned earlier, can vary from 20 to 30% depending on the uh, wood species. Yeah. So why this fiber saturation point is so important? Yeah, that is because, like I said, yeah, this. Yeah. So above the SSP, the volume and the mechanical properties unchanged or remain constant, which is at, at this part. Right? It will become unchanged, okay? And below the FSP, yeah, wood will shrink. Yeah? The wood will shrink and the strength will increase, okay? And the strength will increase. So if you want to improve our the properties of the timber yeah, in terms of strength and also durability, if you want to dry the tree, we have to dry it below, yeah, below FSP, yeah? Below SFP. So if you dry the tree, so the tree normally, like I said, it, it is contain about 20, 200%, 300% of its solid weight. So if you dry the timber, dry up until only left 40%, 50%, so you, it will not increase the strength yeah? and also the remedy. You have to dry it up until it is more than or below the FSP, yeah? which is the fiber saturation point. Yeah? Normally, it's about 20 to 30%. Right, so this is what happened, yeah, from this diagram. So normally in the in the woods or in the timber, yeah, it is full with water. So the bound water, yeah, we just uh, simply say it is about twenty eight percent, and the remaining actually is, uh, free. Uh, sorry, free water. Okay, so when we dry up these things, yeah, when we heat them, right, when we heat them, okay, so the 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 free water will be dry up. Okay, free water will be dried out, and because of the free water dry out, the, the it will shrink. The timber will shrink. Okay, it will shrink. Okay, it will shrink a little bit. Okay, so the amount of the water in the cell, yeah, actually will affect the, uh, many things. Yeah, the physical properties, the mechanical properties, the durability, and also the dimensional stability. Yeah, dimension stability is how stable is the dimension. So shrinkage actually is uh, one of the dimension instability. Yeah, so that uh, just now we have already uh, discussed about that. 
right? So the equilibrium moisture content is the moisture content at which wood will neither gains nor losses moisture to the surrounding. Yeah? So typically, it is ranging from 5 to 17% uh, yeah? when the temperature surrounding is about 70 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is ranging from 2 to 80%. Yeah? So the humidity range is uh, very big. Okay, so what about the specific gravity? So specific gravity, actually, uh, we can call it as a relative density, yeah, which is uh, how dense is one material compared with water, okay, compared with water. So this is how we calculate the specific gravity, which is the weight of the wood, okay, weight of the wood, okay, which, is, uh, which has already uh, oven dry, okay, divided by the weight of the of the what we call of the water time its volume okay time its volume okay so this is how we get the specific gravity okay so normally eh, just now we have already said that the specific gravity for woods eh, specific gravity for woods is only about 0 0.8 eh, 0 0.7 eh, but goal eh, if you look at goal eh, specific gravity of goal it is about 19.3 yeah, it is 19.3. Yeah, so you can compare how light is uh, actually timber. Yeah? Timber actually is quite uh, light. Okay, wood is composed of uh, many things. Yeah? The, the volume of the wood, yeah? it contains solid matter. So the solid matter is uh, basically is the uh, cell. Okay, cell, cell wall and so on. So inside the cell wall, we have the water and we also have the air. Okay, so the total volume is the volume of all of things, eh, total. Okay, so specific gravity, eh, we can determine the timber in three conditions. One is uh, when the wood is green. Eh, so normally it is referred to the moisture content of the wood or the timber is more than 19%. Okay, when the wood has more water more than 19%, we call it as green. Okay, green, green wood. Okay, when it is air dry, normally the moisture content will be go uh, until 12% left. Okay, 12% left when we air dry. Okay, but when we oven dry it, eh, oven dry it, the moisture content will become zero. Okay, so the strength and the stiffness of the wood increase with the increase of the specific gravity. Okay, with the increase of the specific gravity. And then physical and mechanical properties of wood are related to the specific gravity. Okay, uh, Okay. so the density of the wood actually is related to its porosity and the proportion of the voids calculated using the total weight uh, of the wood. Okay, right. So strength, eh? now we talk about the strength. Strength is one of the main property that determine the suitability of the wood in constructions. Eh? So sometimes if the wood that we are using is soft wood, like for example, like papaya tree or banana tree, eh? I believe that no one will dare to use this kind of wood eh, to be your column, okay, or beam eh, to take a structural uh, to take a structural load, okay. So strength is the ability of the material to resist external load without failure. I believe you all have already know, and then strength of the of the timber also. Yeah, we can look it into the tensile strength in the aspect of tensile strength, compressive strength, flexural strength, shear strength, hardness, impact, and also splitting test. Eh? We will discuss about it uh, one by one. Okay, so. We all know that eh, when the compression, eh, when a thing is under compression, eh, sorry, when a thing is under compression, it is when the thing is being compressed, right? The force is in this direction, okay, in this direction. And then when the when the thing, uh, when a wood or, or when a material is under tension, eh, which means that it is being pulled, eh, it's being pulled away. Okay, you I believe you all have already known. So just now we have repeatedly talked about flexural strength. Eh? So I believe you all have already known flexural strength actually is happen eh? or flexural eh? or flexural actually is happen when a material is undergoing compression and tension at the same time. Okay, at the or simultaneously. Eh? When, for example, like 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 this, eh? we call this as a one a three point loading. Eh? We have one point. Two point and then three point, eh, three point loading. So when this beam is being loaded, eh, is being loaded. So at the top parts here, actually it will undergo compression, and at the bottom parts here, it will undergo tension, right? So aside from that, eh, aside from that, 
flexural strength, uh, compressive strength, and also tensile strength. So if this is the setup, eh, the setup of our loading, and eh, the setup of our loading, you can see that actually at here, there is another strength. Eh? There is another strength, which is what we call as a shear strength. Okay, which is what we call shear strength. So why shear strength happen at here? That is because if we blow up this section, eh, if we blow up this section, okay, you can see, eh, let's say this is the material, okay, and then you have a support over here, okay, and then let's say you have a point uh, look over here, okay, so why the, how the shear strength happen at here, that is because you actually will have a resistance at this direction, okay, and then at the same time, you will have a resistance which is happen at here, correct or not? Okay, this is correct, right? So in order to achieve equilibrium, eh, in order to achieve equilibrium for this uh, condition, then you will, they will have load which is happen at here and then the load happened at here. Okay, load happened at here and then load happened at here. So this load is, uh, it will make a tensile, uh, some sort like a tensile in this direction. So that's why when we test beam, concrete beam at this uh, uh, under this loading setup you will have a break which is in diagonal uh, in diagonal cracks correct or not right so that is a uh, sheer strength yeah but in simply we can say that because we have this okay and we, we have this pair okay shear okay we can say that the wood is actually is undergoing horizontal shear okay horizontal shear so the strength of wood, eh, be it tensile, compressive, flexural, or uh, shear, actually it can be varies according to the direction of the applied load. And the example, like this is uh, quarter son, eh, and then this is the back son, eh, quarter son, and then back son of the wood, you will have different direction of the grain. Okay? And then the uh, directions of the applied load eh, actually will also be affected eh, by, by, by this thing. Okay, so we can say uh, in general, which is parallel to the grains and perpendicular to the grains. Okay, and then the wood grains actually is the direction of the wood fiber with respect to the main axis of the wood. Okay, main axis of the wood, which is, uh, take example, yeah? let's say, so this is your tree. Yeah? So this is your tree. So the main axis actually is here, right? It's actually here. So the grain, which is parallel to this axis, is what we call as a parallel to the grain and then the perpendicular is uh, this direction okay so what you have to know here actually is this is the axis of the wood okay axis of the wood all right and then in wood grains eh, in wood grains we have a lot of different types of grains eh? for example like we have a straight grain eh, which is like this and we have a straight grain with straight grain and then we have edge grain yeah which is happen uh, here which is shorter compared to flat grain, yeah, which is happening here. And then also we have some uh, cross grain, and then we have spiral, spiral grain, okay? And then we have diagonal grains. Yeah. So later in this slide, yeah, I have already uh, what we call included, yeah, all of this type of this grain yeah, in uh, what we call schematic drawing, yeah, so that you can compare yeah, all of this, the difference between all of this. Okay, so straight grain, yeah, which is run, in a single direction which is parallel eh? which is parallel to the axis of the tree and eh? just now we already did, did say eh? so if this is the tree okay if this is the tree so this is the axis so every green eh? every greens which is running parallel to the axis of the tree is what we call a straight grain okay straight grain and then we have a uh, spiral eh? because tree we know it has a, its annual ring right so you can have the spiral grains also and also sometimes you get irregular so this irregular eh? it can be formed by many factors sometimes uh, because of the defects eh? sometimes it's because of the knots sometimes it's because of the branches when you cut off the branches you will have the some sort like a knot right some sort like a knot so that is uh, that will uh, result in irregular uh, strength of the tree Okay, so the effects of the slope is like this. Eh? Effects of the of the slope of grain eh? actually is like this. Eh? So it is very simple. So when we have a material, or oh, sorry, when we have a timber which have this uh, slope grain, yes, eh? so we have we call it a slope grain. Okay, so if we loaded it, so normally the failure surface will happen at the grain. Okay, it will happen like this. 
Eh? So this actually uh, you can also refer to the to the slide that I have already uploaded on the fractography. Eh? This is what we call fracture origin. Yeah, fracture origins. Okay, and then uh, this is uh, how we calculate lah, eh, the angle of the grain. Okay, and then we continue. Eh? So the tensile strength and compressive strength, which is parallel to wood grains, eh, are higher than perpendicular to the wood grain. Okay, so and then the compressive strength perpendicular to the wood grain is between 12 to 18 percent of the compressive strength of the wood grains. Okay, and then uh, Tensile strength, which is parallel, tensile strength, which is parallel to the wood grains, is approximately two to four times than compressive strength parallel to the wood grain. Okay, and then the shear strength, which is perpendicular to the wood grain, is higher parallel to the wood grain. And so you digest it uh, later on. Okay, so this is just a comparison comparison between the tensile strength and the compressive strength with relations with the directions of the wood grains. Okay. And then the hardness of the wood, like what we have already uh, mentioned earlier, it is defined as how easy the wood to be worked with. Eh? And then it depends on the density, stiffness, and the bonding in between the uh, what we call wood fibers. Okay. So impact strength is the ability of the wood to absorb su sudden external load. And it normally depends on the hardness, the elasticity, and then also the plasticity of the wood. Okay. So that is uh, the basic, right? Okay, so factors that affecting the strength and also the durability of the timber, uh, we have moisture content, and yeah, we have which, which uh, we have already discussed earlier, and then density, uh, wood grains we have already discussed. Okay, so now it's the defects and also uh, for the preservative uh, treatment. Right. So okay, moisture content. Let me continue a little bit. So higher moisture content will reduce the strength. Yeah, like what we already discussed earlier and also the durability of the wood because the moisture yeah, the moisture will cause the wood to decay so normally when a wood wood actually or timber is what we call as organic type of the organic material so organic material they have the tendency to decompose right over the time and how does this decompositions happen is it must have uh, it must happen under water Okay, so if the wood is dry, yeah, so normally the organic matter will decompose uh, for a very long time. It will take a very long period for it to decompose. Yeah? But if the wood is wet, yeah, so because it is organic material, so it will decompose yeah, very, 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 what we call very fast. Yeah? And it will affect the durability of our wood, for example, like this. Yeah? It's perhaps already decayed. Yeah? It's already decay, uh, become decayed. Okay. So moisture content in the timber, uh, which is ideally is around zero to twenty percent, where there is not enough moisture content for the root uh, wood rooting fungi growth. Okay, when, uh, when it is zero to twenty percent, yeah, it is too dry for the fungi to grow. Okay, but when it is green, eh, which is twenty to forty percent, it is ideal condition for dry rot growth. Okay, dry rot. So dry rot is also one type of the fungi. Eh? So and then we have the wet rot. Okay, so both of this, uh, uh, what we call fungi, eh? they will defect. Eh? They will defect our tree or our timber, but in under a different condition. One is about twenty to forty percent of moisture content when the moisture content is a bit low, and then wet rot is when the moisture content is very high. Okay, when the moisture content is very high. So that is the difference. Eh? And then wood with higher density will have higher compressive strength and better durability due to denser microstructure. Okay, okay, so we'll have higher compressivity uh, and better durability yeah, when the microstructure is denser. Okay, so this is normally happen in hardwoods. Yeah? So the example like the uh, banana wood, uh, banana wood or the or the papaya or the papaya trees. Yeah? So basically, the, it is not as dense as hardwood. Okay, so of course, in terms of the strength and durability, will also uh, less lesser. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, wood defects. Yeah? So wood defects, yeah, it can be uh, formed yeah, by many factors. Okay, it sometimes even for natural defects like this, yeah, when the tree grows yeah, because of some things happen, yeah, it cannot grow uh, regularly. Okay, and it will leave some defects. So that is what we call as natural defects. 
and then we also have the defects which happen during the processing yeah during the processing like what we have already discussed earlier uh, during the air seasoning for example yeah? so some of the process if we mistakenly uh, do that it will leave some defects on the tree and then due to the insect and fungus okay insect and fungus they will eat up your timber okay they will eat up your timber so they will they will bite your timber so that is the uh, defects that normally happens in our world so the natural defects yeah, normally happen is, is this eh? you, you, you look at here okay so check is what happened yeah like this okay crossing crossing our annual rings okay and then we have shack which is normally happen along the radial grains okay and then we also have wain okay take example like this this is the check and yeah? this is what we call as check okay and then we have uh, some sort like knots okay when you have three branches eh? when you cut off the three branches it will leave something like this so this is also considered as natural defects okay this is also considered as one type of the defects and eh? we call this as knots and then we have check like i mentioned earlier check is uh, happen eh? crossing the what we call the annual rings okay and then check is parallel to the rings eh? so this is check eh? for example check and then split is the defect which happened eh, which cross the entire section and eh, which is what we call a split eh? for example like this one this is what we call as knots eh? with what we call as knots okay okay and then uh we have a cup shake for shake also eh? we can call it we can further classify it as a cup shake which is only uh at here and then we have something like complete circle which is what we call as ring shake Eh, but no matter it is cup shake or ring shake, uh, it this happen eh, in the radial direction eh, of the of the annual ring. Okay, so normally for the design considerations, eh, we have to uh, what we call take out the defects part. Eh, the defects part. For so example, if you want to design for a beam eh, using timber, so if we found that there is a notch defects over here. So basically, we have to take out this portion and eh? we only uh, what we call calculate the strength of the timber, which is based on this. Only. OK, which is based on this. Only. OK, because why? Because the normally, yeah, normally the defect is the uh, origins of failure. OK, the example like this, eh? when we test the timber at lab. Eh? So basically, the crack will be propagated eh, from the north. Okay, so that is the weakest point. Eh? So that is the weakest point. So we have to take out that. Okay, so we have talked about the natural defects and also the uh, what we call uh, the nat natural defects. Like, eh? So now it's the processing defects. So processing defects normally is due to the improper drying methods. Okay, due to the temperature and also due to uh, arrangement. Eh? There are quite a few like bowl. Eh? You can see here. Eh? You, you look at the shape. Eh? You look at the shape. This is bowl spring. And then we have cup and then we have twisted okay distorted eh? twisted distorted so one of the example is because during the stacking of the member uh, of the timber during the air seasoning uh, process eh? during the air seasoning process so the correct way actually is uh, we stack it like this eh? but sometimes eh? sometimes due to the workmanship problems and so on eh? the arrangement become like this eh? and your woods eh? this Will become bow eh, and so on and so forth and eh? this one will become distorted and so on eh? so this is one of the reasons eh, which resulted eh, in the uh, processing defects and then we have insects and also fungus eh? wood destroying insect uh, for example like termites eh? termites pinhole uh, pinhole borers and also beetles eh? all of these are the timber destroyer or wood destroyer so no matter it is still in uh, as a tree or after it has been product eh, as a timber product when you already use the timber to build your house eh, these termites uh, borers beetles they will still attack your woods so that's why the treatment is very important eh? and then the conditions and, and then also the fungi eh? fungi we have the brown rod and also we have white rod eh? actually we have already encountered this and this so this brown rod is uh, what we call as a dry rod Eh, dry rot and then this is the wet rot okay so this normally happen when the temp uh, when the moisture content is about 40 to 60 percent eh? this just now eh? and this one is 20 percent to 20, 40 percent 
yeah, when the weight of the when the water content, uh, weight of the water in the timber. Okay, so the conditions for the fungal fungal growth is uh, during uh, proper temperature, moisture which is greater than nineteen percent. Okay, with the present with the presence of oxygen and also the food which is the food fiber, yeah, the wood fiber. Okay, so when this all of these things uh, exist, eh, so normally the fungi will come, eh, they will attack our trees. Okay, so if you look at here, so the termites, okay, they try to build their home eh, in your timber. Okay, so this is uh, quite disgusting, eh? <laughs> quite disgusting. So the defects, okay, and then due to the beetle, if due to the beetle, you will see the hole like this eh? because the beetle they eat. Your, uh, the, 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 the timber okay and then if the defects is due to the fungal eh, or fungi okay so normally it will be from the roots okay from from its hardwood okay so this is uh, normally it cannot be uh, the woods cannot be used okay so how do we prevent this eh? how do we prevent this eh? the first step is actually through the seasoning of the wood so what we uh, what what is mean by seasoning of the wood is not that we add some uh, uh, what we call add, add some uh, uh, seasoning material to our food. Eh? It is not the same. So seasoning of the wood is the process of control drying of the lumber. Okay, we want to uh, dry out the water inside the wood to increase its structural properties. Okay, so during the reductions of the moisture content, it will of course increase our strength, okay? increase our, uh, the timber strength, reduce the shrinkage. Okay, so after the wood have already been dried out, yeah, it will not shrink anymore. Yeah? So which means that the stability, the dimension has already been stable. Okay, and then reduction in weight. Okay, because uh, as we have already discussed earlier, so most of the weight in the timber actually come from water, and then it will also become more durable. Yeah, why it is more durable? Because without the presence of the water inside the timber, yeah, so actually it can uh, prevent the attack from the uh, wet rot and also from the dry rot, right? So the methods of drying, yeah, methods of drying, basically we have uh, two. So normally uh, we will do uh, both of this. Yeah. So one is the air drying, yeah, like uh, the picture that we already seen just now where we stack all the timber together and yeah, stack it level by level yeah, and then we let it to dry so that is what we call as uh, air drying okay we let it dry naturally and then the clean or oven drying clean or oven drying is like this and yeah, we stack our timber products inside the kin okay and then inside the kin we will blow hot air yeah so this is quite comp uh, uh, different compared with the kin of uh, cement production yeah, where in this kind of a cement production we burn yeah? we burn uh, what we call the clinkers and yeah? we burn the clinkers but here we cannot burn because it is timber yeah? so we just blow hot air inside the, the skin in order to dry up yeah? to dry up our uh, what we call our timber okay so this is uh, drying yeah? so drying so we have to stack and we have to stack up all the timber okay so that each layer of this timber will have a steady flow of air okay so the air will go will flow from here from from here eh, in the in the middle and so on eh? so it will dry up our woods okay so this is the nat nat natural one yeah so the durations of the drying on the drying process actually is uh, dependent on the type of wood yeah? soft wood yeah, will take slower time okay we take slower and then and then the hardwood will take longer time yeah? shorter time and longer time and then it is also dependent on the size of the lumber the surrounding environment and also the stacking method and then uh, another process that a timber must undergo because uh, before it put into uh, application is the process of introducing or injecting special chemical into the wood cell by special techniques okay so this purpose actually is to prevent the destructions from all the things that we have already discussed earlier the termites uh, what, what you call the pin pinhole borers the beetles and also the fungi okay and also the fungi so this is uh, one of the uh, picture that I get from the advertisement uh, from Perma Timber. Okay, so 
uh, when they sell their, their timber product, they say, okay, their, their, their product has already been uh, preserved, eh? already treated. Okay, so if it is treated, eh, so you can see, eh, this area actually has already treated and it can protect our timber from the ingressions of the all the thing that we don't want. Yeah, the 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 insects, the, the, what we call insect bacteria and so on. Right. So we will see eh, the green color actually is the chemical, eh, the preservative. So before this, eh, many, many years ago, when people start to use timber, as a construction material to build house and so on yeah? they find that the wood has the tendency to decay very fast which is about five to ten years yeah? either by termites and so on so the how they preserve wood they are using the olive oil okay so the preservations of the wood actually starting from there yeah? but now we are no longer using the olive oil yeah? so in the industry so basically they are using t3 uh, basic types of preservatives yeah? the first one is what we call as creole Creosote oil, eh, which is the oil best, eh, oil best pre preservatives, and then we have the water based uh, preservative, and then we also have the solvent based preservative. Okay, so it is important that the preservative must penetrate into the wood, and to such extent it is effectively protect the, our timber. So if you look at here, yeah, so the Preservative is not only located at the surface of the timber, yeah, but it even penetrates inside the woods. Yeah? But of course, you do not have to penetrate entirely yeah? because as long as it's pen uh, what we call is protected here. So basically, the outer agent and yeah, the external agent, it will not yeah, go into our woods. Yeah? So as long as it can penetrate to a certain extent, yeah, which can effectively protect your uh, timber. Yeah? So this is one of the example. Baratin, which is the uh, creosol oil. Okay, so what is the attributes of the ideal wood preservative? So the first one is easy to penetrate into our wood cell, okay, to or easy to be absorbed by our wood cell, and then it is permanent. Okay, sometimes uh, some of the preservative, like I said, the olive or olive oil, eh, actually it is uh, hard to penetrate and also it will not permanent. Yeah, it will not permanent and then uh, it is toxic to the insect and fungi so that the insect and fungi they are they, they, they are afraid to 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 what come close to your timber and then safe to handle and then colorless yeah? and then compatible with the coatings and also finish and of course it is cheap right and then the ease of the injecting preservative yeah, is dependent on the wood density okay depending on your microstructure the chemical compositions uh, size of lumber and also the moisture uh, what we call moisture content so basically how do we apply this preservative yeah, we have uh, a few methods one is what we call as non-pressure method so by non-pressure method non-pressure method we have brushing okay so this normally is uh, like the oil, eh? creosol oil, eh? we use brushing, eh? we just brush, brush the surface and also immersion, eh? we build a tank and then we put the chemical or preservative inside the tank and then we immerse our uh, timber product inside the tank, okay, and then on top of the immersion, eh? there are some improvisation which is we use the hot and cold open tank treatment, okay, we will talk about this, we will show you the picture on, of the uh, hot and cold water tank later on, Okay, and aside from the non-pressure method, and non-pressure method actually is cheap. Eh? Actually, it's cheap, but it is not as effective as the pressure treatment. Yeah? So in the pressure treatment, we have the full cell and also empty cell. Eh? All right, so the only method to achieve any worldwide degree, worldwide degree of the penetration is by the way of pressure treatment. Yeah? So sometimes brushing is not that effective. Chemical will not be able to penetrate into the wood cell. Yeah? And it need repeated process. Yeah? It need high maintenance. Yeah? Maintenance. You have to brush the preservative from time to time. Okay. And then like the uh, solvent base. And now we also have the solvent base of preservative. Sometimes you only need to spray on our uh, the surface of our timber and eh? spraying only okay to protect our woods okay just by spraying only eh? but that are not as effective as the pressure treatment okay and then immersion also eh? immersion we have a uh, cold immersion which is the lumber is immersed in the tank for a few weeks okay uh, in uh, normal temperature and then we have hot immersion where we immerse in tank at higher temperature which is about 90 degrees celsius 
Okay, and then we also have just now we have already mentioned we have the hot coal immersion where we immerse the timber or the lumber in the tank at 90 degrees Celsius during heating. <clears throat> air in the cell cavity will expand. Okay, we will expand, and then then during the cooling of the cell, it will shrink and absorb the chemical. Okay, so this is some sort like uh, what we call a pressure process. Okay, a pressure process. So during the hot heating of the air in the cell cavity, it will push the water go out from the cell cavity, and then when during the cooling, eh, the cell will shrink, eh, and during the shrinking, it will absorb the chemical. Okay, so naturally, the what we call the preservative, it will go into uh, the cell of the timber. But of course, eh, that uh, compared to the pressure method, eh, pressure method is actually more effective. Eh? So uh, this is the process. We put the lumber into a container and then uh, this is the full cell. Eh? So pressure, we have full cell and also we have empty cell. Eh? And then we, uh, I think straight away, I'll give you a look at here. Okay. So we put the timber into the container, okay, and then we suck out the air, suck out the air, which uh, make here vacuum, eh? vacuum, okay, and then after that, this is the what we call this is the preservative. Then after that, we fill the vessel with the preservative while the container is still uh, in the vacuum condition, okay. Then after that, we give pressure, okay, we pump air inside, okay, we give pressure, raise the pressure. Okay, raise the pressure and then we release. Yeah, we release the pressure. Okay, we release the pressure again. Okay, and then we drain the preservative. Okay, we drain the preservative, let it dry. Okay, let it dry. Let, let the preservative, the left, the excess of the preservative to uh, drop to the bottom. Yeah? And then after that, we vacuum it again. Okay, we vacuum it again. Yeah? So final vacuum and then final drain. Okay. So, okay, so this is, this is the, the, the process. Eh? So the timber is placed in an industrial treatment cylinder. Okay, an initial vacuum is created. The timber cells are evacuate, evacuated of air and the vacuum is held. Okay, we left it vacuum first. And then after that, we flooded the cylinder or the container with the treatment solutions. Okay, and then after that, we give pressure to it to push the chemical eh, to go into our cell, okay? And then after that, we vacuum it again, eh, vacuum it again to extract the excess trick, uh, the excess uh, solution, the preservative, okay? And then after that, uh, with low pressure inside the timber, throw in surface solutions, okay? So that is the, uh, for the full cell, okay? For, for the empty cell, eh, for the empty cell, where is the diagram? Okay, there is no diagram. Okay, so for the empty cell, is uh, we apply pressure, eh? we apply pressure, we do not give, we, uh, not, not, not vacuum, eh? we not vacuum, but instead of we vacuum, eh? we apply pressure, okay, and then we put the preservative into the container, we spray the chemical, and then increase the pressure again, forcing the chemical to penetrate into the cell wall, okay, but the air cavity is compressed. And then after that, we reduce the pressure of vacuum. Air in the cell cavity will expand, eh, pushing the extra chemical out. Okay, and then the cell wall, eh, cell wall actually is filled with chemical, eh, like a fiber a saturated point. But the cell cavity actually is empty. Okay, by using this method, so it is more economical. Okay, and it will result in a more cleaner uh, lumber. Okay, so that is the difference between the full cell and also the, uh, the uh, what we call uh, uh, empty cell. Okay, empty cell. So if you look at here, okay, so these are the example, and these are the example of the timber which has already been treated, okay, which has already been treated. Okay, so uh, just now is the what we call is the processing, eh, is the processing of the timber, and then now we talk a little bit about the timber stress grade. Okay, so timber stress grade we can look into two uh, categories. One is under the wet condition, where the moisture content is greater than nineteen percent, which is when the timber is green. Eh, we say when the timber is green, and also another condition is air dry conditions where the moisture equal to or less than nineteen percent. Okay, so that is a dry condition or air dry condition. Okay, 
and then um, okay lah, so this is uh, basic okay manner of cutting a log okay manner of cutting a log so shrinkage occurs in three perpendicular sorry do you need a shut break sorry yeah, yes yes doctor okay okay five minutes okay no problem eh? because i know normally we cannot uh, stay focused for a very long time <laughs> okay never mind okay so we take a short break we come back uh, let's say 9 nine twenty. is it okay we take yeah break. okay, yes, okay. okay. Thank, thank you doctor thank, thank you, you. Okay. okay thank you very much two thousand years later all right guys okay can we continue okay please uh, uh stay with me for another yes minute. yes 20 to 30 minutes uh, yeah i think we will be done in another 20 or 30 minutes okay so we just uh, continue uh. okay so uh the method of a cutting log uh, when we're cutting the log uh, when we are when we have the log okay so when we cut it into the lumber so the method of cutting uh, we actually uh resulted in different extent of the shrinkage okay and then the shrinkage normally they can happen eh, along its axis okay so when you have a when you have a tree okay like this okay and then you have roots eh, okay so the shrinkage eh, it will happen at this direction which is along its axis okay and then it will also happen to the radial directions and also along the tangent to the radius okay so what is mean by tangent to the radius is uh, like this eh? So if you look at this cross sections, eh, this cross section, so this is along the axis, okay, and then radio is this, eh, because the radio is growing upwards, okay, radio. So the shrinkage is uh, can be in this directions, eh, in this directions, and also tangent, eh, which is in this direction, okay, in this direction, okay. So the extent of the shrinkage is different, okay. So the tangential shrinkage is the highest, okay. So if we cut the wood. Eh, cut the wood which is tangent to the radius or the tangent to the uh, what we call to the annual ring eh, or the growth ring of the tree so the tendency for the shrinkage to happen actually is the highest and it is about two times of the radial shrinkage so in its axis directions actually is is the most stable eh, in terms of the dimension stability okay the longitudinal shrinkage is actually negligible eh, but it still happened eh, but it's only very small compared to the other two okay so how do we say eh, the cutting manner or the cutting method will will result eh, in different types of this shrinkage uh, what we call re, uh, regarding to the direction is like this eh? so sometimes we will have a quarter son which is like this eh, quarter son and then we have back son okay so uh, in the quarter son you will have the what we call the edge grain eh? edge grain which is look like this and then for the back zone you will have the flat grain which is like this eh? flat grain which is like this so sometimes eh, how do we differentiate the quarter zone and also the back zone it is uh, you can you can easily think like this eh? you can easily think like this so take example if you have a tree lock okay so if we divide if we divide this tree lock into quarter okay into quarter and then we cut according to this quarter that is quarter son okay but if we have a tree lock like this okay and then we cut the tree lock eh, not quarter by quarter and then we cut it like this and then back to back eh? so that is what we call as back son okay back to back so that's why we call it as back son okay so depending on how we cut eh, how we cut the the the, the tree eh, how we sawn the tree so it will result in different types of shrinkage. Eh? So we have to uh, know that. Okay. So tangential is like this. Eh? Some something happened like this. Okay. Something like this. And then the quarter zone, you will have the radio. Okay. And then the shrinkage is in this direction. Okay. So that is the that, that is the the meaning. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh now we continue to the wood product so in the constructions eh, of using timber eh, as a construction material it basically can be divided into two forms eh? so one is lumber which we have already repeated uh, mentioned before and then uh another one is panel 
okay and in panel okay, in panel it can be further uh, divided into veneer panels and also non veneer panels okay so the veneer panels what is the difference between the veneer panels and the non veneer panels is when you look at the panel okay, for example like this and the surface okay, is look much beautiful okay, compared to the other other uh, product uh, timber product so that is actually it's already been veneer okay? they have applied another surface here okay? another surface here so that is veneer uh, what we call panel so in veneer panels okay, we have uh, plywood okay? so plywood everyone know about plywood okay? we use plywood uh, to make foam work uh, for the concrete okay? so it is made from thin sheet of the wood Okay. so we have the wood okay we have every wood okay and then after that we stack this wood okay and then we apply the adhesive yeah, to stick all these things to become a thicker plate okay? so that is what we call as plywood yeah? on the other hand on the other hand non veneer plate panels yeah, it can be from the wood particles and also from the wood fibers okay so the wood particles for example like the uh, waste in the in the wood Eh, the small chips, the wood chips, for example, wood chips, eh, where people normally will throw this chip, eh, will throw this chip away. So they collect this chip, eh, collect this chip, and then mix it with uh, what we call resin, eh, for example, and then after that, they press it eh, into a platform, eh, into a platform. So that is what we call as the uh, wood particle or fiber board, eh, particle board or fiber board. So that is the example of the non uh, veneer panel. Eh, we compress it. Okay, veneer panels is uh, like plywood. So the use for such other applications is such as for the floor, okay, for the floor, for the wall panels, eh, and for the non-structural application is uh, such as the furniture, like the wardrobe, okay, cabinet, uh, handrail for the staircase, for uh, example, right? Okay, so. Uh, uh, this is the wood-based product, uh, which is manufactured by bonding together using resin under heat and pressure. So this is uh, what we call as particle board. Eh? Particle board, you have this particle, eh? which is from the wood chips and so on and so forth. Eh? And then we bond it together by using resin, okay? And then we heat it and then we pressure it uh, uh, and it will gain certain strength. Right, so we have uh, particle boards, okay, particle boards, and also fiber boards, eh? fiber which is using the wood fibers. And then a few years ago, a few years ago, another university, a local university, eh? there are some researchers, uh, they approached me and eh? they want to uh, ask me to collaborate with them eh? to produce another new types of panel, which is from the mycelium of the mushroom. Eh? We all know in the mushroom growing industry, mushroom growing industry, how they grow mushroom eh, is normally they will just uh, provide uh, what we call the timber, eh? timber or the wood as a base like this, timber of a wood as a base, okay? And then after that, they will grow mushroom. Okay? How, do, how, we, how do we draw mushroom? <laughs> okay, like this, eh? it's look like mushroom, okay? And then the root of the mycelium, uh, uh, roots of the mushroom, which is what we call as, as mycelium, eh? my mycelium, eh? mycelium. They will grow inside the timber, right? They will grow inside the timber, and then once they harvest, eh? once they harvest the mushroom, so basically the base they will throw away, eh? because this base will be uh, full with this uh, mycelium. So mycelium actually they will produce a lot of this uh, what we call muckers, eh? muckers, which is which make the woods very uh, what we call very dirty, yeah, very dirty, very disgusting. Okay, so uh, the researchers from other, another university they collect all of this timber, eh? all of this base from the mushroom industry, and then they uh, use uh, what we call they heated it, and then after that they pressure. Okay, and then the pressure, they call this as a mushroom board, eh? mushroom board, but actually it's a mycelium board. Eh? They press it and the string actually is as good as the particle boards and also the fiber boards, like, like usual. Okay, so that is uh, types of uh, what we call the types of this uh, wood product. Okay, types of this wood product. Okay, and then uh, particle boards, eh? like I said uh, earlier, it is manufactured from the piece pieces of wood particle, for example, like chipboard, a flatboard, splinter, for example, which is the waste. Yeah? People are going to throw them away, so they collect all of this piece of wood particle, 
okay, glue them together by either using uh, resin adhesive and then bond them under heat and then pressure it in a hot press. Eh? So that will form an uh, interparticle bond eh, in between of this plate, okay, and then this plate that can be used to uh, replace the plywood, eh, the common plywood. And then, uh, all right, so that is the particle, wood, eh, particle board, okay. So particle board, uh, it has a low density, medium density, and also high density. Right? So high density is as dense as the hardwood which is about 800 kg per meter, uh, meter cube, okay? Which is as good as the, as the hardwood, all right? And then fiber board is they are using the fiber, the wood from the fiber, okay? Wood from the fiber, and then they use uh, similarly, eh? they glue all these things together by using resin or adhesive, and then after that, they heated it and then press it eh? to compress it to make it harder, okay? So the veneer, plywood and also block board are natural wood panels. And meanwhile, the particle boards and fiber building boards are reconstitutes of wood panel, eh? which are manufactured mainly from various uh, wood waste. Okay, so that is the other thing. So this is the wood ply. Eh? So this is uh, how we uh, manufacture the, uh, what we call plywood, eh? plywood. So we have all of this. Eh? So we have all of this wood ply. We, we gather all of this wood ply Okay, and then we just stack it eh? uh, layer by layer, eh? layer by layer, and then bonded them together, eh? bonded them together, so that will form the plywood. So plywood is uh, straightforward. Okay, and then also nowadays, I believe most of you uh, sometimes have already, uh, some of you might have already known, eh? there is a type of a new wood product, which is what we call as glue lump. Not, as, not, not, not so new, eh? because this has already exist, uh, I think, many years ago, eh, 10, 20 years ago, which is what we call as glue laminated timber or glue lump. Eh? So similarly, eh, glue lump actually is uh, like this. Eh? Uh, it is a sawn lumber, eh? lamination uh, and bonded with an excessive, uh, adhesive. Eh? So this is the collected uh, lumber. Eh? section of the lumber section of the lumber and then they just glue it together to form uh, to form as a new lumber okay but in this uh, lumber actually there are a lot of adhesive eh? so before this eh, people are refusing to use these glue lumps eh, because people are afraid that the weakest point which is the lamination here eh, which is the adhesive here it will break before the woods okay but because of the uh, what we call the advance advancement in the adhesive technologies and eh? so now they have already invented the lamination uh, i mean the what we call the adhesive eh? which is at here and yeah? during uh, at the joint of this lumber section eh? it is much stronger compared to the timber itself okay so there is no more issue eh, regarding this eh? so they can use this uh, glue lump so glue lump eh, actually is uh, it, it is uh, very useful. Eh? We can glue eh, the lumber section in, uh, for example, like this, eh, straight, and then according to the shape that you want, double taper, curve, arch, and so on and so forth. Eh? So this is the example eh, of the applications of using uh, glue lump. Eh? And also in, in, in Joho, eh, we have a building which is uh, to showcase the glue lump timber. The whole building was built by using the glue lump. Eh? So that building actually now is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is the headquarter for a glue lump company, eh? for a glue lump company. So it is very nice, eh? very, very, very nice building. Okay, so the structural sections, eh? it can be, uh, uh, this is also a glue lump section. Eh? So this is just to res uh, resemble Eh, to resemble the uh, hatch section, the eye section uh, for the eye section, eh, for the eye section, steel section, eh, the mild steel section. So you can use, uh, for example, like this, eh, the board that glue together, okay, and then you have a section glue together, or you have particle board, eh, glue them at here, okay, which make it similar like this, okay. So no matter how you do it, eh, for example, you have a particle board here, and then you also you use the laminated via all of this consider as glue lump eh, because we glue them together. Okay. And then, okay, so this is the last part, which is the applications of the timber. So the timber, we know it can be used as a structural members, eh? for example, like a column, a beam, truss. Okay. And for the non structural, it can be used as frame, eh, partitions, eh, and also for, uh, 
for example, like wall. Eh? We use it as an in insulation wall. Okay, right. So this is the example, uh, eh? the the use of the what we call the use of the timber in order to make the uh, structure rafter and so on and so forth. Okay. So another applications, eh? we mainly in the in our house we use it for our doors and so on, eh? and then for outdoor furnitures, okay, which is nice. Eh? So it can also be combined uh, with other construction material, for example, like concrete. Eh? So this is like concrete, okay. So it's easily to be combined together by using uh, ball and nails, even nails only, right? So uh, another. Uh, pictures okay so i think uh, that would be all for today yeah timber so we still have about 25 minutes so i think we won't